understand how light waves behave when passing through a medium. We simply need to understand a very simple concept, and that is how wheelchairs turn. If we imagine the man on the right turning his wheelchair, and we track the path of his wheel, we can see that the outside wheel will have to travel a much longer distance than the inside wheel. If we look at a top-down view, it becomes even easier to illustrate. By drawing both the track for the inside and outside wheel, it becomes clear the outside tire or the it becomes clear the outside wheel or the blue path is much longer than the inside red path. Because both wheels are traveling at the same time, the outside wheel has to travel faster and the inside wheel turns slower. So this is the basic concept. When a part of an object moves fast and another part moves slow, the object will turn towards the slower side. When light is traveling through the air, it travels at about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. When it hits a medium, like glass or water, the light slows down, and sometimes by a lot. We measure how much the light slows down with something called the index of refraction. The index of refraction is a number that represents the ratio of the speed of light which again is normally 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the velocity or the speed of light in a given medium. So for example, glass has an index of refraction of 1.5. That means that the speed of light in air is 1.5 times faster than the speed of light in glass. In water, light slows down as well, but not as much as when light travels in glass. The index of refraction for water is about 1.3. So, when we're talking about lenses, you simply need to know that light is traveling fast outside of the lens and slower inside the lens. To illustrate what happens when light passes through a curved medium, I'm going to draw two lines signifying I'm going to draw two lines representing two different parts of an image. And then I'm going to draw a series of perpendicular lines just as reference points. And when I draw these perpendicular lines, it's easy to see that the bottom part of the image hits the lens before the top part. That means that the bottom part of our image is traveling slower, while the top part of the image continues to travel fast. Now we have a situation that's just like a wheelchair turning. Part of the image is traveling fast, and part of it is traveling slower, which means that, just like the wheelchair, the image is going to turn towards the slower side. So now we draw our so the image angles down like this. Once both the top and the bottom of the image are inside the lens, they travel straight because we only get turning when one side is traveling faster than the other. As the image exits the lens, we have the same process all over again. We draw our perpendicular lines and we see one part of the image is in the lens while another part is out of the lens. Again, which means the bottom part is going slow while the top part begins to travel fast. So once more, the image turns towards the slower side. This rounded lens is called a converging lens. And that's because if you draw several rays of light, each bending and turning towards the slower side as it enters and exits the lens, you will see the rays of light bend and actually intersect or converge on the opposite side of the lens. This hourglass shape is an exaggerated version of what's known as a diverging lens. And if we draw our rays of light, you'll see why. Again, I'm going to draw two straight lines signifying the top and bottom part of an image. This time we can see the top part of the image hits the lens first. So the top part goes slow and the bottom part goes fast. And once again, the light turns towards the slower side. As the light exits, the top part is in the lens longer, so it's going slow while the bottom part of the lens is going fast. So the light bends up even more. If we draw multiple rays of light, turning and bending, we'll see they actually bend away from each other or diverge, and they never get a chance to cross. In a converging lens, we have this point where all of the rays of light will eventually crisscross. If you've ever used a lens or a magnifying glass to start a fire, what you're really doing is looking for the focal point of the lens or the point where all the light waves converge. When you talk about how powerful a lens is, you're really talking about where is the focal point. The equation for how powerful a lens is or how much the lens bends light is power is equal to 1 over the focal point.
or the smaller the focal point or the closer the focal point is to the lens, the more the lens is able to bend the light. If we look once again at a diverging lens, also known as a concave lens, we see there isn't a traditional focal point or a spot where the rays of light cross, but we still need to know a focal point in order to calculate the power of the lens. So we make up a focal point. We draw our rays in reverse and we find a spot where those rays cross. The point where these imaginary lines cross, that's our focal point. And the distance from the focal point to the lens, that's called our focal distance. Here's a problem asking us to figure out how light will behave as it passes through a straight piece of glass. Once again, I'm going to draw two parallel lines so I can figure out which side of the image hits the glass first. In this case, we can see there's a time where part of the image is in the air, meaning it's going faster, and part of the image is in the glass, so it's going slower. As always, the image is going to bend towards the slower side. As the image exits, however, we have the opposite scenario. Now we have the top part exiting first, which means the top part is going fast, while the bottom part of the image is going slow. So this time the image turns down. If I drew my angles right, then both the entrance and the exit angle should be the same. They've simply shifted up slightly because they turn up as they enter and then down as they exit. So if we redraw this image a bit cleaner, we'll see it bend up as it enters and down as it exits, maintaining an angle that is parallel to its original trajectory.